Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Texas Tony Tiger here with another video for Madden NFL 23. This time, I mean, starting off with the new series, it's going to be the Madden NFL rebuilding. Um, pretty much, I'm going to be taking a franchise. As you guys can see, it's the Lions, and we're going to be rebuilding that franchise basically to glory, pretty much. Like, it's a road to glory in a sense because we're going to be trying to get them to win a Super Bowl. Um, Obviously, the final goal won't be Super Bowl. Um, if I win the Super Bowl, then, you know, I'd like to continue the series on. But, I mean, hey, your guys' feedback is more important, too. So, if you guys want me to just basically try to build a team as fast as I can to win a Super Bowl, then once I win the Super Bowl, maybe I'll start another series with a different team and try to rebuild that franchise. Uh, the reason I went with the Lions was basically because... They're one of the lower rated teams in Madden NFL. Uh, basically what I did was I picked the five lowest teams in the game and then I just asked my friends to help me pick out which team I should go with. Uh, they voted the Lions, basically because their history, there's not really much known for winning, right? Like, yeah, they made a couple of playoff appearances the past maybe like 10 years, but other than that, they haven't really done anything Zero. I think they have the longest drought in the NFL, actually, for a playoff victory. Um, so, yeah, I decided to go with the Lions. And um, just giving you guys a, pre a brief overview of the team. I mean, there's not really much to work with. Our best players are tight end, TJ Hawkinson. I mean, they have two great pieces on the offensive line. Three, if you count Sewell at the right tackle. But primarily, I'm just going to try to build this young team. Um, the biggest decision right now would be Jared Goff. I mean, you guys can see he has a 15 million cap penalty right now. Um, so I got to figure out whether he's going to be our quarterback of the future or if maybe sometime either th during this season by the trade deadline or by the end of the year. Um, yeah, he's pretty much gone. And then I start rebuilding with either quarterback through free agency trade or through the draft. I mean, the receivers are really solid. I mean, I like the four receivers that we have right now. Uh, but our number one piece, our number one building block is uh, outside linebacker Aiden Hutchinson from the University of Michigan. Go Blue. Um, he was their first round draft pick this year. Pick second overall. Um, season stats, 81 speeds. Not the fastest, but I mean, he does have tackling, hit power, uh, decent awareness starting off for a rookie. He is 77 overall, so he's going to be our focal point for this series, basically trying to build around him. Um, Right there where it says hidden, that's essentially his uh, development trait. In Madden Franchise, if you guys are new to it or never played, there's four development traits. There's Normal, Star, Superstar, and Superstar X Factor. Um, right now, his says hidden because pretty much every year, whatever the class of rookies are, um, once they play 500 downs, then they unlock their development trait. But that's only for people who have a development trait of star or higher. So it could be star, superstar, or even superstar X Factor, which does happen. It's a lot more rare, obviously, compared to starting off with star. But hopefully with Aiden Hutchinson, no spoilers, I haven't checked. Um, he ends up being at least a superstar. When it comes to our defensive backs, I mean, we have Mike Hughes. He's really He looks really good for the team, 90 speed. 81 man, 74 zone, and 85 press. Uh, Amani Awuwa uh, Hopefully, Hopefully I said that right. I mean, he's 6'2", 205. He has the measurables at least. He may not have the fastest speed or the best coverage stats, but I mean, he does have size, which for my defense, I really do in like. That's exactly what I look for. <clears throat> Excuse me. And for our, our third corner, um, former first round pick as well, Jeff Okuda from two years ago from the University of Ohio State. Um, I hate the Buckeyes because I'm a Michigan fan, but at the same time, I will I will shout them out. Um, yeah, I mean, he was pretty decent coming out. I mean, everyone thought he was going to be the next top corner because, I mean, when you look at someone like a Marshawn Lattimore, who I believe came out a year or two before him from the same school, I mean, you figured he was going to be exactly the same um have the same start great start that marshawn Lattimore did i mean right now people consider marshawn Lattimore one of the top two two or three corners um i think he's number three personally behind jalen ramsley and jair alexander but you guys can call me out in the comments if you like 
Um, but yeah, I mean, he has two years experience, but he hasn't really shown his full potential, really any potential compared to what he was expected to be of when they, uh, with Detroit Lions drafted him. Um, his stats are pretty decent, 91 speed, that's pretty good. Um, his man and zone coverage stats aren't that good, as well as his press. But right now, with his size, six foot one, two oh two, uh, I'm basically playing him outside as well. And as you can see, the game still thinks he could be a star in this league. This, so they, he still has a star development. So with that, I mean, he'll be he'll develop a lot faster than someone with normal development. Looking at our draft picks for this coming year, I mean, we do have two first round draft picks. But one of them does belong to the Los Angeles Rams. I believe it's the final draft pick from the Jared Goff trade. Um, so I'm not really expecting much out of that. I mean, it's projected to be pick 32. And I honestly expect it to be in the bottom four to six picks anyways. So I don't really have any high expectations for that pick. Obviously, if they have a down year, then that'll be great for us. Because maybe we can turn that into a better player. <clears throat> Looking at the salaries, I mean... We have 16 million in cap space right now, um, but looking forward, Jared Goff. I mean, he has a 30 million cap hit this year, 30 million next year, and 31 the year after that. So, for a 72 overall quarterback, his age is 27. Uh, for those of you that don't play Madden, basically, once a player hits 28 and they go on to year 29, um, they have a they start declining in Madden. Their, their ratings start taking a hit. They don't start improving their ratings. It's all pretty much downhill from there. So yeah, once a player hits 28, it's kind of you want to figure out where they're at and basically in your team. Obviously if a player is like around 98, 99 overall, their stats even going down, they're still going to be 95 players, stuff like that. But for someone like Jared Goff, who's 27 years old, 72 overall, and he's basically on the decline of his career in real life and in Madden in terms of the regression. Um, you got him, I have to make a decision, make, decision to make to see whether or not I continue with him. Maybe I, next year he I decide to draft a quarterback in my first round and I end up, you know, just having Jared Goff as a bridge quarterback. But obviously it depends on the gameplay this year. We'll see how things go with that. Jeff Okuda as well, like I said, he has a 9 million cap hit and a 10 million cap hit the year after that. Um, I know in Madden they did add fifth year options for players on their rookie contracts. I don't know if he'll have one. Usually the game doesn't ask you until it's they're in their final year of their rookie contract and they'll ask you if you would like to pick it up. But again, same thing with him. Whether or not he plays for us and he develops the way he should be. Again, he does have the star development. But at the same time, I mean, if he's just getting burnt on routes, if he's just giving up touchdowns, then I mean... It, it wouldn't be too crazy to cut him loose or maybe even trade him in the by the trade deadline because since he is still young with his star development, um, I mean, maybe another team might want to give us a good enough player or even a high enough draft pick to get rid of him. And then just looking towards the future, man, I mean, we got Aiden Hutchinson, Sewell on their rookie contracts. So right now is the time, the best time will be to try to develop this roster and try to compete for a championship because I know especially for Sewell at tackle and then Aiden Hutchinson if he does develop into the superstar that I would like him to be um, they're going to be demanding max contracts and they're going to be really high and uh, to be honest it might set our team back but at the same time it could work in our favor if we do end up deciding to go with the rookie contract because if we do have a rookie quarterback under his rookie contract then that gives us more flexibility to spend money on other positions. Uh, looking at our season goals, I'm just going to go for the lowest season goal that they have, and that's four wins, because I really don't expect this team to do much. Um, I don't really expect to compete for a playoff spot as well. Uh, when it comes to our prospects, the beginning of the year, I mean, it looks pretty good right now. We have four quarterbacks projected to be top ten picks, um, two offensive linemen, an outside linebacker, an interior offensive lineman, and a wide receiver projected to be in the top ten, which I fully expect for us to be. In, that, in those positions, so I wouldn't be surprised for one of those quarterbacks to fall to us. Um, throughout the year, I'll be scouting. Um, every couple of episodes, I'll show you guys a scouting report just to see where we're falling in projection and that where we're 
who we're expected to pick. Uh, so right now I have a, I guess like a meeting with Agent Hutchinson basically, just letting him know um, that he, he uh, stood out in camp basically through preseason. And basically, um, depending on his game performances here on out, um, that could help improve his ratings and also improve his uh, development trait. Even though we don't have it unlocked, I mean, if he, if we keep doing great games with him, then more likely we could probably get that to a superstar. And depending, again, by his rookie year at the end of it, if we get defensive rookie of the year, then hey, maybe he can get a superstar X factor for us. Because with Madden, a lot of the stuff is on abilities, um, as you guys will see later on. Right now, Lions. Uh, nobody really has an ability except for the punter, which, I mean, to be honest, that, that doesn't make any difference. Um, I don't know if Hawkinson did. I honestly did not check, but later on, I'll check to see what kind of abilities you can get. <clears throat> right now, we're talking to the media. <clears throat> it's basically just asking us, like, oh, what kind of expectations we have for the year, and uh, my expectations are pretty low, like I told you guys. This is a rebuild, right? This isn't. If you guys are expecting me to blow out every team by 40 points and to finish the season 17 and 0, win a Super Bowl my first year, then I'm sorry, but that's not going to happen this year. Um, hopefully next year at the earliest, because I want to make changes right away. But at the same time, I mean, I am playing on all Madden difficulty. Um, I am playing on simulation as well to get the more authentic NFL experience. But I am playing on all Madden difficulty. Um, here in training, basically I, have, I get three players to focus uh, more on and while I simulate the training. And the three players I focused on was our wide receiver, Jameson Williams, our linebacker, Hutchinson, and Jeff Okuda. Just to see if he can develop more. Um, but yeah, right now let's get into the gameplay for you guys. Let's showcase how my Madden skills are compared to the CPU. Uh, first, we're taking off the Philadelphia Eagles, who... As, if you guys didn't notice, our team is rated 78 overall. Their team is rated 86 overall. So, 8 eight rating difference. And trust me when I tell you guys this, this you guys will notice it. Um, I don't know what happened to my recording at the beginning, man. Um, I pretty much recorded over all of this. But I don't know what happened. Apparently, my voice didn't record. So, I'm right now, I'm basically recording over just the video so the video was already pre-playing um, it's just my voice that I'm recording over it so that's why if you guys see me hear me talking and you keep seeing like stuff moving or maybe there's a delay just it's not your phone or your computer or anything or YouTube it's me because I'm just recording over our game footage um, looking at the next gen stats I mean completion percentage was it was decent I mean 66% wasn't too bad Looking at the Eagles and their next-gen stats, I mean, they're pretty much a, rush, a rushing team. They averaged 5.2 yards last year, 8 yards per scramble. So, yeah, I mean, I got to look out for Jalen Hurts on his scrambling ability, as well as Miles Sanders for his rushing ability. Um, when it came to coaches, uh, whenever I do a rebuild, I always create my own coach. Uh, the coach I decided to go with was uh, Tony King, Tony for me. And King, because I mean I like King, so, and I wanted to see go with something flashy. I mean I decided to go with a younger, a younger uh, broadcast, I guess, of the coach, basically, uh, make it part of. I guess I kind of wanted to go for like a Sean McVay, Kyle Sh Shanahan, like a brand new mind type for this game. Um, but yeah, so we start off on defense. Uh, that's usually where like I'd like to start off on. I prefer to kick the ball at the beginning of the game, and then so that in the second half uh, we kick, we receive the ball. Um, so that maybe if I'm losing by six points or or even just a field goal, you know, we can answer back right away and we can get back into the game. Yeah. So setting up here on defense, so the first play, um, Miles Sanders gets a bit, he doesn't get to run up the field. We do stop him, and you know, right away, Madden decides to look at our draft picks. I mean, two top 15 picks last year, a second round pick, third round pick, you know. So, hopefully, those are the guys that, that would like to make an impact right away for our team. And then, again, so we can see who's going to be on our team, who's going to be 
who's going to be the starters, who's going to be part of the future, and then guys that maybe aren't cutting it, but obviously if they're still young, you know, maybe I can trade them away for some better draft picks or maybe some other younger players that I have an eye on. Yeah, here, I mean, we're luckily we're able to force the pass incomplete. I mean, we did get the interception, but our defender fell out of bounds. Um, and yeah, right now it's all about trying to contain Jalen Hurts, which, as you can see, he escapes the pocket, but thankfully, since he's off balance, he doesn't really make a really accurate throw. So right away, we're able to force the third and ten. And again, we force him out of the pocket, but on the run, it wasn't so good for him. So right away, I'm pretty excited about the season. You know, we force a three and out right away in the first possession. So we're able to get the ball back. Um, or at least we're able to get the ball in our, uh, right away. And I decided to move my receiver out from the punt because it was inside the 20. But the, of course, the CPU gets a lucky bounce. And our first drive for the 2023 NFL season starts on the five-yard line. Here comes Jared Goff. I mean, there's nothing really to write home about. Anyone that knows about Jared Goff's story knows that, yeah, he's not the greatest. I mean, he at least has 89 throw power, so it's pretty decent. It's not up there with the Josh Allen or the Patrick Mahomes. But, I mean, hey, it's better than having a noodle arm in the eight, low 80 overalls, at least. So, you know, backed up in our own end zone, we decided to run the ball with our superstar. I mean, in my opinion, superstar running back. I mean, I know he's not, he doesn't have the de superstar development trait. I believe he's star. But DeAndre Swift, I mean, he's pretty much going to be the focal point of the offense, whether it's running the ball or passing. Um, I would like to look at our receivers to develop them, like, uh, I'm on Ross St. Brown as well as their first round draft pick this year, Jameson Williams. But the focal point of the offense, the first first steps always go through John DeAndre Swift. And right here, man, I was pretty upset. Like I threw it to my receiver who had he had a pretty decent step on the defender. Uh, but I don't know what happened on the play. I go for the catch and he decides to alligator army. Like I was hoping he would extend a little bit more, but nothing really works. Here on third and six, you know, I don't want to go three and out, so I'm trying to go, trying to get um, a better positioning for my team to get the first down. And here comes my first pick of the season with Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions. Um, if you're a Lions fan, I mean, nothing's really new. Like I said, every, anyone that knows Jared Goff's story, throwing picks under pressure isn't anything new as well. Uh, so yeah, obviously they take it back for a touchdown, and right away I get my second drive of the season. Um, and again, same thing, try to force DeAndre Swift early, you know, while the game is still close, I want to focus on the running game, I want to establish a rhythm, um, But because I know with how bad this team is, I know eventually later on during the game, uh, we're going to have more opportunities to pass the ball, because more than likely we're going to be down by double digits, so we're going to need to pass the ball more on more downs than running in order to get in scoring position and to score points maybe in a faster rate basically just to either stay in the game or to overtake the lead here i try to go with the play action because we set up the run and right there i find my superstar tight end tj hawkinson he's 90 rated overall he's the highest rated on our team um he's one of the top maybe maybe he's number five number six tight end in the league in the game he's rated pretty highly I mean, he has decent speed, but in terms of his route running and catching ability, as you see there, I mean, as soon as he catches the ball, the safety tries to hit him, and he's able to spin out of that tackle. Um, so, yeah, he's... Right now, he's our number one overall receiving threat. Um, again, I want to work on our receivers to try to get them at their level. They all have really decent speed, and, you know, DJ, DJ Chark. Um, I'm on Ross A. Brown. Jameson Williams with his 98 speed, but the receiving stats are the ones that they need to work on. And the ones that I need to develop. Uh, right here, man, we take a silly sack. It forces us into a third and 17 on the 37 yard line. All I tell myself is don't take another sack. Just don't take another sack and get ourselves out of field goal range. Um, you know, even if we don't get the first down, at least just get some sort of either incompletion or get some yardage. And unfortunately, I take another sack thanks to Hassan Reddick. Um, and that forces us all the way to the 41, 42 yard line. And I'm like, man, there's no way we can make this. Um, but sure enough, I mean, our kicker said he can make it. Uh, when it comes to picking plays, since I do play Madden rel relatively uh, every day, I mean, I love Madden. It's one of my favorite games. Um, 
I uh, instead of picking the plays myself and like picking like one play beaters, picking cover three beaters, stuff like that, um, I'm deciding to go with the coaching game plan basically where all Madden picks plays for you. Um, but kind of like basically it's kind of like listening to my offensive and defensive court defensive coordinator. So I'm gonna let them pick the plays and then I'll just try to execute them as best as possible. Uh, right there, they get a completion to their new wide receiver. Uh, Rondell Moore, formerly of the Arizona Cardinals, and I didn't know this at first when I was playing. I was just like, man, who is this guy destroying me? Like, this number 12, like, it was, it's not A.J. Brown, who's number 11. It's not Devontae Smith, who's number 6. So, like, this guy just completely caught me off guard. Um, I end up checking the depth chart. I don't show it here. I end up checking the, checking the depth chart, and I see that they have Rondell Moore. And I was just like, how could the Cardinals get rid of Rondell Moore? Like, there's no way they should have released him. So there's no, um, I want to know how exactly Philadelphia is able to get their hands on Rondell Moore. He's rated 80 overall. He has 94 speed. So like the Eagles getting him is a big help. So that's something I need to look into after the game. Um, so yeah, back to my possession down 14-3. Uh, I mean, we're just trying to get into scoring range right there. I mean, I noticed if you guys play Madden, uh, linebackers don't jump. They have a really slow reaction to the passing game. And they can't really jump over a phone book. That's pretty much how bad their ratings are. Um, so I knew if I'm able to just at least lob it over a little, the linebacker, I can get it to my tight end. And sure enough, it worked. Um, and then right here, man, I'm trying to score. And I know another Jared Goff. I mean, that was on me as well. But I tried to hit a wheel route to John Bray Swift. And we end up uh, not converting the third down. And that puts us into another field goal. Um, so now the score is 14-6. We're able to first, we are able to force Philadelphia into another third down situation right away. And this time Jalen Hurts is able to hit his magical, uh, basically cross off, off the body, cross body, whatever it is, um, into Rondo Moore again. Um, I call I this whole game I just kept calling Jalen Hurts the magician man because he was pretty much rolling out of the pocket avoiding sacks um, making crazy plays that pretty much that's just what Madden does it, it it makes you go crazy you think you think you have them and then you don't and then again right here he's able to roll out the pocket and he's able to find this tight end Dallas Goddard for another easy touchdown man um, so yeah right now close to two minute warning in the second half. Or in the second quarter, we're already down 21-6. to six. And to be honest, I mean, if you guys expected anything else differently, then I don't know what. I honestly don't know what you guys were thinking. Like, again, this is going to be a bad series uh, starting off. This is going to be a bad season starting off. Like, again, that's why for my season goal, my expectations were four wins. Because I felt if we were able to get four wins, that would be, to me, that's a win. Um, if we get less than four wins, if we somehow go 0 and 17, then yeah, that's a loss right there. Here, I mean, I get the pressure, um, so I decide I try to jump, dump it off right away. Um, I force it to my running back, who I would have preferred for him to drop the pass or at least just let it hit his feet for an incompletion. But he decides to make uh, he come back for the ball and catch it, and then he's able to spin out of a tackle. But then the Philadelphia defense comes in and forces the easy fumble. So right here, next possession for you, Philly. Uh, we force him into a third down. And right there, man, Jeff Okuda. If he was able to get the pick, that would have really helped our defense. Um, it would have helped our offense as well as a team overall because instead of them getting the field goal to going 24-6, uh, it, ends up, it ends up being uh, a score. Um, so, yeah, an offense, you guys can see him trying to score right before the half. Uh I see they come in with an all-out blitz, and I throw it to my running back, who, unfortunately, because of the under-pressure trait that Jared Goff has, he overthrows a wide-open running back. So here, starting this, starting off in the second half, um, I try to get the ball to my open receiver, no defenders near him, and um, I honestly don't know what happened. Like, I didn't feel a pass rush. I didn't feel like I was rushed. I just saw my receiver was open, so I decided to throw it to him, and apparently he, I was completely under pressure. And another wide open wide receiver that Jared Goff just overthrows. And then, so yeah, so right away, 
Philly starts off in great field position, and Miles Sanders just destroys my linebackers right there. Like he just runs over them completely. Um, his next gen stat was, I believe, 17.8 yards after contact. Like so, he's pretty much breaking the first tackle. Um, right here, it's a big moment for us. Even though we're down big, you know, we're able to get our first sack of the year thanks to Anthony Anzalone. Um, I ended up having to control the linebacker because I felt our safety there didn't get through fast enough, so I decided to blitz as well. Even though I wasn't in the zone, I decided to blitz as well, man. Um, and yeah, thankfully it works in our first sack of the year. So we get the second and long. And you know, like I said, I'm just trying not to score. We're just trying to hold them. And right there, perfectly set up. I mean, you can see, unfortunately, he is a rookie. Aiden Hutchinson blitzes right through. Falls for the fake, and Jalen Hurts is able to get the easy first down. And first and goal, literally the next play. They decide to run it again out of a different formation. And once again, our defense bites for the fake, and Jalen Hurts walks in for a touchdown. Uh, in the ensuing kickoff, you know, I decide to take it out with Jamison Williams. And I see a hole, and I think, oh, man, yeah, I'm gone. Like, there's no way the defense can get me. And right at the last second, the defender gets off of his block and he's able to tap me saving a touchdown so yeah man 31 6 sec third quarter um we're just trying to get into any sort of score means you know any field goal touchdown and once again another jared goff pick man like a lot of it yeah i could say is on me and it more and obviously it is because i'm controlling the player but at the same time man like there's just uh so many things you could have done better Right there, Aiden Hutchinson he gets his first sack of the year. First of many, hopefully. Um, and yeah, man, like I said, I'm trying to get him to be defensive rookie of the year. I'm not looking to take over Aiden Hutchinson, you know, manually try to get him as many sacks as possible. Um, I'm just going to let the CPU roll with the, whatever defense I throw out. And hopefully, yeah, Aiden Hutchinson can lead the league in sacks, maybe. You never know. Uh, right there, again, throw another horrible pick. Right after we just forced the punt with our defense first play on offense we end up deciding to throw another interception for Jared Goff I don't even know how many that is um, here on the next play you know Miles Sanders off the edge you know he ends up getting an easy walk-in touchdown but thankfully there is a flag uh, for holding on the offense so it does come back um, hopefully right there I feel like all right maybe we can stop them we can turn it around first and 19 after the penalty you know maybe we can get the ball back not give up any points and right away man our Miles Sanders again shrugs off the first tackle like nothing and the penalty in effect essentially gives him more rushing yards because it pushed him back nine yards and right away he scores on the very first play um, back in the third quarter still I mean we're just trying to get anything we're trying to get first downs even whatever we can do you know just to boost the confidence of our team um, right here, we get the first down to TJ Hawkinson. So, you know, we're just trying to take it one step at a time. Here, I take a big chance to DJ Chark, and, yep, he ends up connecting it, man. Like, I really thought, oh, man, like, the defender was pretty much step for step with him. I didn't think he would be able to get the ball. Well, right there, I mean, he decides to celebrate pretty, I mean, lo losing as bad as we are at this point in the game. I mean, I don't really like it, but, hey, I mean... If the guy's happy, it is a big play. Uh, I believe it's our biggest play of the games. I mean, even the defense or the offense for the Philadelphia Eagles on the sidelines looks over it, man. So, I mean, I'll, I'll let it slide this time, but you know, down 32 points, like, there's not really a time to celebrate. You know, that's a Chase Claypool type move. If you guys, you know, watch any football here, I mean, I see they decide to send the blitz, so the middle of the field's wide open. I decide to hit my backup tight end, Devin Funches, out of the University of Michigan, go blue. And it sets us up at the four-yard line. And I decided to, you know what, let me run it in. Um, if anyone deserved to get the touchdown, I felt it was DeAndre Swift. Um, Jared Goff, who's just been playing horrible all game. So being that close to the end zone, I decided to try and run it in with our running game. And, yep, yeah, it worked. And we get our first official touchdown of the NFL season with the running of DeAndre Swift. Back on defense, I mean, we feel we're pretty confident. We feel like we could be back in this. And then Miles Sanders gets another halfback pass. And again, once again, he just blows right past our linebacker. Pretty much doesn't have any effect on him whatsoever. And they make a big play. And they're already at midfield. Um, 
So again, they decide to hand it off, and Miles Sanders does something which rarely happens, but it does happen. It's great. Running backs that are short enough, they're able to slip through their offensive alignment when they're engaged in the defender. And yeah, like he completely fakes out the defender that I was controlling, and he ends up getting a big gain. Here, we force him into a third down situation. Um, I expected the slants. I expected something inside, at least. Um, I basically positioned our defense to react accordingly, and it didn't work. And again, right here, perfectly play called. Another read option. You know, they've been selling the run to Miles Sanders, and then they've been passing the ball. So the last thing we expected was another read option from the quarterback. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just been bad plays after bad play. And right here, he ends up getting the score to Rondell Moore, and they go 45-13. Six minutes left in the fourth quarter. Um, pretty much all I'm telling myself is just don't, <clears throat> don't give up 50 points. You know, I mean, let's at least keep it to 45. Um, if we can get on the board, that's great. But if we don't, the only thing I want to make sure is that the defense does not score uh, 50 points on us. And then again, right there, Hawkinson, he's able to position his body perfectly in order to keep the defender off of him and to continue the drive for us. Um, Right here, I decided to throw it up to Hawkinson, you know, believing in him, having confidence with the previous play, and unfortunately, I just put him in a bad position, and he just gets lit up by three defenders, and ends up forcing another interception for Jared Goff. Um, so yeah, Philadelphia has the ball back, and the only thing, like I said, just don't give up the touchdown. If we give up a field goal to give it 48 points, um, I mean, I'm not happy about it, but I would prefer that. I mean, giving up the six points and letting it go over 50 points. And right there, Philadelphia, they call another read option play. And <clears throat> and uh, Miles Sanders, or Jalen Hurts, is able to get another big opening. Fortunately, right here, our starting outside linebacker, Julian Orquara, ends up getting hurt on the play. Um, he's limping off, so it looks pretty bad. I mean, if it was an arm injury, at least, maybe there's a chance for him to come back. Um... But yeah, him limping off doesn't help our defense whatsoever. Um, right here, we're third and eight. You know, we want to at least stop them from getting the first down to get the ball back and to stop them from scoring. And we're able to do that with getting another sack from on on uh, Hopefully, I said that right. And then yeah, so we're able to get the ball back. Uh, three minutes to go. We I feel like we can do something with it. Maybe at least control the clock to maybe get a touchdown or a field goal towards the end of the game <clears throat> right here i see my running back and again poor accuracy nothing new with jared goff uh, he was wide open again and jared goff misses another wide open receiver <clears throat> um right here man i throw it i force it to tj hawkinson um, i didn't expect the corner to sit on the route i thought he would come down to the running back but unfortunately we throw another pick in the game this one was a little salty just because it was to Darius Slay Jr., who, as if you guys don't know, he was the former corner for the Detroit Lions. He's now on the Philadelphia Eagles. So, you know, having your former player score on you, especially especially at home, too, um, it's not it's not a good feeling. And, and then, as well, that puts us that puts them over the 50-point mark. And yeah, man, it was just it was just a rough outing for this first game. Um, Again, I didn't have high expectations to see the coach throw the clipboard there because, I mean, yeah, that's basically exactly how I felt. Um, there was no high expectations for us, but, hey, we got the, I mean, we got through it. Um, so that's going to do it for episode one, guys. Um, I'll be back again, hopefully, in about a day or two for episode two. But do me a favor, leave a like, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, y'all have a great day. Peace.